Hey there my friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be looking at pastels sent to me by a company called Loxley Arts. They've sent them to me to review and sample and have some fun with and then give a little bit of feedback which is great. The pastels are called Koi Inu Toysen Do Soft Pastels. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Um, they come well packaged in a cardboard box and surrounded by foam which is nice and secure. The thing I love about these straight off is this wrapper. You can remove just a little bit of the wrapper to reveal a little bit of the pastel and then work with them like that. Or you could just break pieces off and work with them um, like any other pastel. But I really like the idea that you can keep um, some wrapper on the pastel and it saves getting pastel all over your hands if that's something that you don't like. And it was a lovely feeling to be quite honest. Be nice if they made the wrappers out of paper as opposed to plastic but um, we can't have everything all in one go but this is a super idea. Okay on with the subject. So I've got 24 colours to play around with. I'm going to show you a few different methods of using them and this is a great idea for anybody with limited art supplies um, just because you've got a set of pastel soft pastels doesn't mean you can't do intricate work with those soft pastels and I'll show you how I achieve um, more intricate work later on when I do the butterfly in this little butterfly and aster study. Okay so I'm working on Claire Fontaine pastel mat just a small off cut of white. I've taped it down with acid free masking tape I wish I'd used a little bit of colour on the tape somewhere because the camera kept flickering. It was picking up too much white. I guess it was struggling with the white balance, but um, it comes and goes. So it's not too much of it. I think I've edited out most of it. So first of all, I just applied a base coat of the medium blue to where I want the sky to be. It laid down super quickly. They're not overly soft, but they're not as hard as some of the pastels that I've um, tried. The pigmentation is light fast um, and yeah, just lays down wonderfully, nice and smooth. They blend really well. That white, it looks like I'm having a hard job applying it, but I'm not. It went on really, really well and it just blended superly. Superly, I've just made up a new word. <laughs> brilliantly got brilliantly and super mixed up there I've not had enough coffee today okay so yeah so you can blend with blending tools or just use your fingers or a piece of cloth anything like that and they they did they they blended really well so super really nice to work with not too creamy and they don't leave a sort of a creamy residue on your fingers which is really nice and they seem to brush off your fingers really really quick if you do get any on they don't seem to stain your fingers um like some other soft pastels do okay going on with a little bit of darker a darker blue now so just want when you do skies nine times out of ten the skies are darker at the top um, the closer you get to sort of the um, horizon line of a sky, the lighter it gets generally. So keep that in mind um, if you are doing skies, just to darken the top a little. Just put in a little bit of a, a darkness across the top and around the corners. But I don't want a ghosting um, image around the butterfly. The butterfly I've, I've actually masked off with a little bit of frisket. That's a clear masking film you can buy. People normally use it for things like airbrushing. Uh, I, do, I have had um, a couple of requests for some airbrushing videos. So that is something I'll be doing in the future as well. If you've got any uh, suggestions of subjects or mediums you'd like to see me cover, um, please leave that in the comments below. I do work with all different mediums to be quite honest. So pastels, coloured pencils, watercolours, watercolour pencils, oils, acrylics, inks, yeah, graphite, charcoal. <laughs> okay, so now moving on to the, the flower area, which is um, it's sort of a stylized aster that I'm going to be doing on this piece. It was just something, I just wanted a nice bright subject where I could use a few different techniques um, to sample and review these pastels. I don't like sort of doing 
just swatches and things like that. I do swatch my colours, especially if they're um, water mediums. Um, but these pastels, I just wanted to put them through the paces in a little project, I guess. And yeah, the way I learn is by just jumping in, I guess, to, to a project and not so much doing swatches. I do swatch, but I like to get in and get started on a project as soon as possible to sample supplies. So as I said, these were sent to me by Loxley Arts. I didn't purchase these. Okay, so trying out, so we used um, mid blue, a darker blue and white to get the sky in. I'm using three different colours to get base coats of the asters in. Now all I'm doing is I'm looking at a reference image on my uh, iPad, which is in front of me. I never print any images out, so I just work from digital images, uh, photographs on normally that I've taken on the uh, iPad. So just trying out some different um, techniques here, adding some pressure, um, varying pressure I should say in varying places. So just get a feel of how these are going to be laying down. I can say for definite that all of the colours across the 24 range that had been sent to me blended superbly. They all blended together with each other. They all blended onto the paper very well. They were non-staining on my fingers, which was wonderful. Obviously, it helps having that wrapper. The wrapper, it's actually serrated um, in various places along the pastel length. So you can just remove a little bit at a time. Um, when when you use your pastel down to that area, you can use, remove the next bit of um, covering. It's a brilliant idea. Yeah, really, really good idea. I'm not one of these people that when they buy their pastels, they break them into multiple pieces and put them in a box. That's not how I work. I do like to work with full sticks when I can. Obviously, if pastels arrive and um, and you've had you know you've ordered pastels and they've arrived all broke and then yeah definitely send them back but if one or two have had edges chipped and things like that that's no big deal because I'll show you later I'll, what can actually be done with those little bits of pastel should should you get little bits of fall off in your box and things like that you can use them so moving on so across the aster area, the area of the aster flowers, I just applied the three colours, um, uh, dark, medium and light pinks. Then I added a little bit of yellow. And when obviously when the yellow is next to one of the pinks, it's going to create a little bit of an orange tone if you mix the two together, which is what I did. And a little bit of green and brown was added just to give a hint of some stems peeping through here and there within the flowers themselves. Okay, now the tool I'm using is a tool called a soft tool and it's by a company called Pan Pastel. And you can see me working with those on other pastel videos on my YouTube channel. And all it is, and uh, they are little plastic tools of varying shapes on the tips and each tip has an appropriate sponge cover that can be placed on. So there's a rounded one, a squared one, a pointed one, and you just um, you just swap and change um, tools as you need them, and you swap and change sponges as they wear out. You can wash them to clean them, but to be quite honest, they don't last that long. So I tend to use one for a couple of projects um, and then dispose of it and put a new cover on. You can use fingers, you can use different tools. I'll be using a silicon tip tool later on in the project. Lots of tools out there. You can use pe uh, pencil blenders, you know, the paper, paper wrap tools, um, all different things. But yeah, use your fingers if, any, if you've not got anything else. But just be um, aware that if you do use your fingers, on a painting, the oils from your fingers can affect the longevity of the pigments on your painting or drawing. Just something to keep in mind. So if in doubt, don't use your fingers. But on this, which is just a trial piece, um, it's not something that I was aiming to hang in a gallery or anything like that. So it's, I'm just happy just to have a mess about and see what these pastels can do. And thoroughly pleased with them. 
So blending out that edge because I want the flowers to be slightly out of focus towards the skyline and there you go. Moving forward, I've filled in the majority of the base coats and that's given me an overall feel of what I want the end piece to look like, where the darks are going to be and where the highlights are going to be. So now the next stage for me is to add the second layer and then multiple layers after that if needed to um, add a little bit of definition to the flowers where I don't want them all to be defined and as you'll see towards the end of the project I did actually cut the bottom of this painting off um, and I mounted it and I skipped sort of over the bottom inch or so of the painting because it was just uh, didn't need to be there for this trial trial is that the right word sampling video I guess but I really enjoyed this project uh, it was the pastels they built up very quickly once they were blended they didn't shift too much yeah I've got nothing bad to say about them there were no gritty bits in them they all applied very smoothly and very blendable so thumbs up all round for these lovely Quo Inor Toyson door. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it, but uh, yeah, lovely pastel. And thank you to Loxley Arts for sending them to me. Loxley Arts has actually sent me um, a box of goodies, um, different mediums to trial and sample. So I'll be reviewing a few more of those in the future. So adding some brights now, jump forward a little bit there adding some lights, just get some texture on some of the flowers, not all of them. If I added texture to all of the flowers, the same amount of texture, then it would look like a wall with you know flowers painted on it. You need some to keep some depth. So some flowers are be going to be in more focus um, than other flowers and to keep the contrast, keep your lights and your darks in a piece to make it look realistic too. Okay, going on with some lights here and actually getting some petal marks in now, very fine petals on an aster flower. It's, this piece is very stylized. it's not going to look hyper realistic, it's going to be classed as photo realism but not hyper realism. I don't work in hyper realism, I haven't got the time to spend hundreds of hours just on one piece. So photo realistic is good enough for me, especially on something like this. So building in some more darks, getting a little bit of contrast there that I'd lost earlier on and that's great with pastels. These pastels, like every other pastels I, I work with, you can work dark to light, light to dark, mix it backwards and forwards, wonderful medium to work with and very therapeutic. There was a cup of coffee to one side and a podcast on and yeah, life is good. Hope everybody's well that's watching this video. Hope you're all keeping busy and creative. And if you like this video so far so good and hit like, that's really helping my channel. Thank you to everybody who's been liking my videos. Thank you to everybody who's been subscribing. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It does help my um, YouTube algorithms. And Thank you to people that have been sharing my videos as well and sharing my channel with family and friends. That's really helpful too. Thank you so much. Okay, so we've got those darks in. We've blended them out with the soft tool. I'm going in now with some more light pink. Hyping up the contrast now, especially next to that dark. So now I really want to start going lighter and it'll contrast so well. That's a silicon tool so that's just a, a, a tip of silicon. You can get them in different shapes. I think they're known as um, colour pushers in some areas. It depends who's selling them and who they're made by but really it's just a, a colour shaping tool made out of silicon. I think you can get them for nail art and things like that. They might be actually cheaper than buying the art, the ones meant for art, because they're all the same thing. They're just sold for different markets, that's all. Now you can get them on Amazon. Or oh, your local art shops might stock them too. Okay, here I'm showing you, you can get detail 
with not as much detail as, as we're going to get on the butterfly but I've sanded off an end to get a nice sharp edge around the pastel and by doing that I can create nice lines nice clear clean lines because I've just sharpened that pastel on a fine piece of sandpaper and it's just sandpaper generic sandpaper with a fine grit and I use that to sharpen my pastel pencils when I actually used those not that I used any in this I only used a white pastel pencil at the very end just to sign my name and that was it the rest of this painting is done with the past the soft pastels on their own in comes the white so leave your white till last when you're happy with a, how a flower or an animal or whatever has come along once you get to that sort of happy stage and it all seems to be looking the way you want it to that's when you go in with your white so and less is more so leave your white till last unless it's a white um, that you're adding where you want to glaze over the top I did do a little bit of glazing on this but not a lot okay and moving on now this is where it gets interesting I now want to start working on the butterfly the butterfly is very intricate and these um, sticks are very chunky so what I do, I got this palette from Karen Dash, but you can sand down a plastic palette of your own and it's just to make the surface textured so pastel and pencil and things will grip to it. So I've just rubbed three um, pastels onto there, added a drop of water on each, little brush. Don't use your best um, watercolour brushes for this because um, obviously the texture of the surface and the texture of the pigment might damage uh, very fine watercolour brushes so this is just a sort of a little generic art master brush but it does the job and by mixing the water in with your pastel pigment you create a paint so this is a wonderful way where you can get every best you know technique out of your pastels you don't need a lot of art equipment to create a painting using a piece of glassine to rest my hand on that protects the artwork from being smudged that I've already worked on and then start to apply um, the liquidized pigment I guess you could call it of the pastels obviously just like anything else the more water you add the more translucent the pigment becomes because there's less pigment um, ratio to water and obviously you can just keep adding more and more pigment to make a, a thicker paint although it does become quite paste like if you add too much pigment so what I like to do when I'm using pastels in this technique I like to build up in layers so nice thin layers intensifying the color as you go along wait for each layer to dry and obviously this is dependent on paper as well this works really well on the Clairefontaine pastel matte paper be careful not to um, over soak it because it will bleed out as you can see the darker area of the butterfly that I've applied has bled out a little bit but that doesn't matter because the black veins of the monarch butterfly are going to be covering that area so if you're working on velour paper obviously that doesn't take water-based mediums so you wouldn't be able to do this technique on that other pastel papers you can though so um, just test it on a scrap piece of paper if you're going to attempt this um, watering down pastels and you can dry it with a hairdryer in between so you, that's all dried I did dry that with a hairdryer didn't dry it too much it didn't need it because very thin layers and you just carry on working mixing um, the pastel with the water on the palette to the to one side it's just a lovely medium to work with so never be well never feel restricted by your art materials you don't need everything that's on the market you know make the most out of the art materials you've got and when you do go to buy new art materials make sure they're going to go hand in hand with what you've already got because what you don't want to be doing is if you've already got art materials 
um, and then you go buy new ones you don't want to be forgetting about the ones you've already got because then that's wasted art materials so um, as I always say the only way to waste art materials is to never use them so use what you've got and try I mean this is something I came up with on my own so try and think of creative ways to use the art materials that you've already got get the most out of them and then when you do buy something new um, hopefully it will add to the interest of the materials you've already got hope that makes sense so this was a beautiful relaxing process it really was just building up the layers gradually mixing the pigment uh, to one side and another great thing about this is if you were mixing paints the paints would be drying on the palette while you're working and if you know if you're working with acrylics some can't be re-wet watercolors you can re-wet them and inks to a certain extent the pigments that I was mixing on the palette dried so slowly on the palette that I didn't need to re-wet any of them while I was working on this butterfly so that was lovely normally you'd get a little bit more evaporation from um, the water but it doesn't seem to do that and yet it dries very quickly once it's on the paper so I've mixed up some of the black pasta with a little bit of water on my palette and now getting the veins popped in so I turned the board round definitely be you know be aware that when you're painting move the board move your paper turn it round to how it feels comfortable for you just because you see a lot of youtubers working with the paper in the same place taped to a table doesn't mean to say you have to do that just do what comes natural to you do what feels comfortable for you and while I'm painting that you can have a look at the flowers and how I brought out some of the whites but I left some of them um, petals pink left some out of focus brought a few more into focus and all with this little box of 24 pastels soft pastels brilliant pastels indeed and you can do this type of work with any soft pastels to be quite honest as long as they're not too hard so just um, concentrating on getting these veins in as I said it's going to look quite stylized at the end but it gives me a good idea and a good grounding of what these pastels can do and and hopefully you too so if it's something you were looking to buy maybe you've not tried pastels before and you'd like to give, give this um, company a go at least you know if you do see these on special offer um, then you could buy a set even the set of 12 I think they come in 12 24 48 and 72 I think I think that's the the sizes that they come in but this pack of 24 because you can mix them so well they're so blendable I don't see the need in buying more than 24 only unless you want to just splurge out and treat yourself but 24 would do the job definitely so just building up a little bit more on the butterfly that's the butterfly in and as I said because it's dry it dries so quick that when I start adding um, increasing the intensity in the coloured areas of the butterfly just a minute sky sky so like my dog was snoring then <laughs> I didn't want the microphone to pick it up um, yeah as I'm adding the intensity I've no fear at all of the black bleeding into it because once the black is in place and dry it's in place and dry it doesn't move so you can paint lights over it you can go at white I added some highlights with um, just the white pastel mixed with a little bit of water it works really well I do thoroughly recommend you giving this a try with any pastels you might have already um, it's uh, fun if you like painting then this is a real fun technique to do with what was normally considered a dry medium so yeah the antenna and the legs were just yeah created with very fine strokes with the brush with the black pigment I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm probably mixing up a little bit more pigment that's why I've disappeared off screen there we go and you can do 
when, if you are working with the pastels um, wet like this you can do all of the techniques you would normally use with watercolour you can do wet into wet wet into dry um, you can load pigments into an area that's already got wet pigment in it and um, you can create blooms to a certain extent but obviously not to the extent um, you can with watercolour and the salt technique that you use with watercolour I'm not sure I haven't tried if you if that would actually work with this I might that try that later while I'm having um, coffee this afternoon and another thing I don't know about you but I like to have art materials out all the time and um, thankfully I've got a room uh, studio people say but a room um, where I do all my um, artwork and I have a lot of art materials out all the time because the worst thing is is if you've got to get your art materials out every time you want to create it can be a bit of a bind and it can put you off sometimes so if you don't have a, a room or a space where you can keep art materials out just have a little sketchbook and a pencil out and you'll be surprised because if you you know pop the dinner on or something like that you've got time to do a little sketch if that sketchbook is out you're more likely to use it okay so that's what I said about I skipped sort of a bottom inch or so um, didn't feel I needed it I could have kept it as it is and signed it right at the bottom but uh, I'd got a mount ready that just to pop round it um, so yeah so I signed it a little bit further up than I normally would removing the tape if you have any problems removing masking tape or washi tape heat it with a hair dryer first and it should come off a little bit easier and always pull away from your artwork and not towards it and there you have a little monarch butterfly on aster flowers produced with Koi Inor Toysendor Soft Pastels sent to me by Loxley Arts and that's a company in the UK. I hope you've all enjoyed this little delve into soft pastels. Um, hope you're all keeping well, stay safe, stay creative. Please hit like if you haven't already and please subscribe and I look forward to seeing you all again next week not sure what next week will be yet but um hopefully i'll be posting tuesday or wednesday okay speak to you all soon take care leave comments and i'll get back to everybody who does okay stay safe bye for now bye bye